Welcome, this is a computer forensics, more of a how to like get started guide. So, for the course I'm teaching, I'm using the DEF CON challenges, and if you had access to our resources, you should have access to this VM. I already have the evidence files, however, if you uh, didn't gain access to our resources and you're doing this from home, uh, how do you get the files that we need. So, since we're doing DEF CON challenges, what I would do is I would Google ANS bad aim. And we're looking for puzzle one, ANS bad aim. And it should be pulling from forensicscontest.com. And here you'll get the backstory, you'll get the uh, PCAP file, You'll get the six questions we're trying to answer. And again, the evidence file. Just to show there's no tricks, I'm just going to download it again. Move to my desktop, and I will work off of this. I have already copied the six questions into a Word document. Yes, these are DEF CON challenges. Yes, the answers are out there. I'm not concerned with did you get the correct answer. I'm looking for the methodology and hence the importance of the report. So, first thing I want to do is I want to open up my PCAP file. Should open up in Wireshark. Well, the problem is, do I really want this? Actually, I don't. I don't want to <clears throat> open this up in Wireshark. We've talked about several tools. We've talked about things like Wireshark, Network Miner, and HashCalc. Honestly, the first tool I want to use is Network Miner. Network Miner will also read PCAP files. But see, you get the different tabs. That's why in the reading, I was very keen on explaining the tabs you can see what files are there you can see the addresses you can see things like messages you could see credentials you can see the different sessions you can see the different other uh, areas parameters dns so question one what is the name of Anne's i am buddy in messages you can see it's going to and from these users. What was the first comment captured? In the subject, you can actually read the messages. Here's the secret recipe, just download it. As you start looking at the attributes, you can see destination user, you can see the value, you can see the text. You can see the second text. So, comment, what's the name of the file being transferred? We know we're talking about files. We only have three files to choose from. You can review them to see which one is the appropriate one. More than likely, it's going to be that recipe. What's the magic number of the file you want to transfer? That's where this gets a little bit more complicated because this does not specifically have a easy to do hash value. So you may want to use, uh, use Wireshark to open that. MD5 of the file. MD5 sum of the file. If you click on the file, there it is. You can right click, you can also calculate it again. You could save the file and open it with hash calc. Lots of options. Alright, so that's one way to do this. I'm going to open it up in Wireshark and we could do the same thing here. I'm going to find a TCP. I'm going to follow the stream. And I'm going to go through the different streams. 
and you can see the different users and the message. You can see it going back and forth. You can follow. If you actually want to decode this, you can. Again, we were talking about the differences between these areas. One thing that I wanted to point out is stream 5. OFT2. You'll notice. File transfer. Recipe.doc. So this is actually the document. Well, actually, I want to do a hex dump. So this is it in hex. And then here is our decoder. So yes, you can pull the file out this way. Yes, you have to do some modifications. But you can use either tool. Don't limit yourself to one tool, first of all. Second of all, maybe go through both tools. If you have any questions or concerns, reach out. I did this just as a get your feet wet type video because a lot of people are still intimidated using Wireshark. You don't always have to use Wireshark. Keep that in mind. Any questions or concerns, reach out. Thank you.